I want to talk to us today, the Lord being my helper, say amen, amen. <laughs> on a very important word. Very important word. A single word. But without it, we have nothing. Verse 30 of St. John chapter 20. I'll get it out here. Thank you, Lord. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might say it. Believe. Believe. We have a tendency to overthink things. God is looking for people that will believe. Amen. Now, believing is linked to faith. We understand that. But I'm, I'm not on the results of believing, which is action. I'm on the very beginning of it. And God approves of believing. Because you might believe that what? Jesus is the Christ. That's number one. In other words, Jesus is the Messiah, the anointed Savior. Amen. And you must believe He's the Son of God. Amen. Amen. Not optional. So we must believe from the Scripture that Jesus is the Messiah, the anointed one, the Son of God. And if we have got over that fence into the belief mode, and that believing, it's not a one-time belief, it's a continual thing, you see. You might have life through His name. Amen. So, belief is essential to our walk with God. Belief is essential to our standing and right standing and remaining in the good standing with God. It's very important what we believe. But more important who we believe in. Amen. I, I'm sorry I don't trust and have faith in the government. I trust and have faith in God. Amen. Now in John chapter 3 and verse 12, and we, we often overlook this verse, we always go to John 3.16, and that's great. But what does John 3.12 say? I have told you earthly things, and you... Believe not. I'm on the word believe. Say belief. This is, this is honed down here to the basics of the foundation of the Christian belief system. And you believe not. How shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? So the emphasis on believing are not believing. Amen. Do you know you can be saved and go to heaven and simply believe? No format, no formula. Nothing but bare belief. Now, it's a belief from the heart, not the head. The head can, can't believe anything. That's the mental assent that God uh, is not too impressed with. He's looking for a belief that comes from your heart, or we could say your spirit. Yeah. Amen. Now, the Holy Spirit is the one that helps us believe. So, how can we lose? Well, I don't see how if you, you follow God's will. Verse 13, no man is ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now there's the cross. Everybody say the cross. So we must believe in the cross. Number one top priority. And whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So the emphasis is on belief. Amen. Believing. Shout, believe in somebody. Believe. If you believe the record, guess what? You have eternal life. Right. God promised it. Yes. You have it the very second you believe. Not when you get to heaven. Right. We're going to arrive in heaven someday because we believe. And we continue in the believing mode. Now, the Amplified, I don't quote other verses too much, but I want to quote Amplified on this. In order that everyone who believes in Him 
who cleaves to Him, trusts in Him, and relies on Him, may have eternal life and actually live forever. End quote. Amen. Now, everybody's going to live forever. Most in hell and some in heaven. But we're concerned about living in eternal joy and happiness with God and His domain and all that He has in future eternity. And I'm not so concerned about living in the underworld or the lake of fire forever because that's a no-no. I don't desire to go there and you don't either. Amen. But there's only one way out. You must believe the account. Amen. Now in Mark chapter 9, 23. Praise the Lord. And I'll take just a second to greet those that, that watch uh, the little live stream that we do from the church here that's over in Africa. So God bless your hearts. And uh, we're glad to tune in from time to time. All right. Mark 9, 23. Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Not some things, all things. So the emphasis again is not so much on receiving what we believe for, but actually the aspect of believing to start with. Because true belief moves the hand of God. Amen. So this is the battleground that we face. It's a belief, again, from the heart or your spirit. Amen. That the Lord looks for in our lives. So this is the question. If we can believe, then all things are possible to those people that believe. Yes. Amen. All things. Amen. And if we're going to ask God for something in prayer, let's ask a little bigger than what we ask, okay? God has it all. Amen. And I, I'm still a preacher that believes that God is in charge and control. Amen. If He wasn't, He couldn't bring revelation to pass. That's right. So don't give me any of that stuff that we're in charge because we're making a mess. Now Satan is the God of this world and he has his finger or his hoof in all the nations on earth. My mind goes to Jesus in the wilderness when Satan came to tempt Him. And Satan said... If you'll worship me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the earth. And he somehow or another showed Jesus all the kingdoms, nations of the earth in a moment of time. Implying that, well, I'll give it to you now. You don't have to go to the cross. See? Right. But Jesus said, no. Um, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now, this, this, this stupid devil, uh, he has temporary control of some things on the earth, but not total control. Don't forget that, child of God. God has the final say. Amen. I said God has the final say. Yeah, that's right. And as long as we're in the kingdom of God and the belief system that He approves of, we cannot be defeated. Now, we're going to suffer some tribulation, but, uh, you know, it's been prophesied, so it shouldn't catch us unaware. Amen. Matthew 21 and 32 now. Okay. Well, this is, this is a tough scripture. I'm glad that he was, the Lord was talking to them. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and you believed him not. Here again, the emphasis is on believing. Amen. Yeah. But the publicans and the harlots believed him, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward that ye might believe him. Amen. So now repentance is required to actually believe. Right. Right. It's all bound up in faith and trust and childlike faith, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I'm trying to endeavor to, to bring about a few points about belief, believing. If someone was to come to ask you, what do you believe? What would you say? Why do you go to church? Why do you call yourself a Christian? Uh, how come you don't run with the world? And, and all these questions. And we need to be ready to give an answer, don't we? What do you believe? And we need to know what we believe. You see, there are those that think they know what they believe, but when they're put in a corner, they don't know. 
It's the assignment of the pastor to teach you what is to believe in. And it's Christ Himself. That's who we believe in. The truth of the Scripture is what we must hold to. Amen. I know you understand this. So John said something in St. John 1.29 now. So, uh, you know, you're in pretty bad shape if, if the Republicans and the harlots are going to get into heaven before you. You're in bad trouble. Democrats are left out. They're not even mentioned here. John 1.29. <laughs> you're crazy, I know it. Going to a big insane asylum on these days. Praise the Lord. The next day, John sees Jesus coming and said to them, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. Now, how many believes that? Amen. See, I'm probing to what you believe. Now, I explain it this way till somebody can explain it better to me. Jesus died on the cross for all those that would believe. Well, no, he died for the whole world. Uh, but God knows who's going to believe and who's not going to believe. It's called foreknowledge. And so even though salvation's available to those that won't believe, it's not God's fault. Because he knows and knows right now who believes and who doesn't. Who's saved and who's not. God knows these things in advance. The good news is, if you've been born in the Spirit of God and you know it, then you, your, your belief is correct and you're on your way to heaven. Yeah. All the world can do is scare us into heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So we must believe then that He took our sins on the cross in His own body. Yeah. How God did that, I do not know. It was a supernatural transference of the sins, past, present, and future, onto his son. He became cursed on the tree. You must accept this. Amen. And more specifically, our sins, mine, yours, were put on the Son of God. The very moment that we believed and accepted him as Savior and Lord by faith into our lives, there was a birth that took place, and my sins were washed away in a moment of time. And so was yours. How's that possible? Jesus already paid for it. Amen. Glory to God. And those that reject his offer of salvation, those sins remain. Therefore, I don't think he died for them. Amen. Show me different. I'm willing to change. Like Monty said, show me different. Well, you're talking about predestination. No, I'm not talking about predestination. God doesn't force anybody to be saved. You had to choose to believe. That's right. Amen. So let it go with that. The thing of it is, you did choose to believe, and therefore, you're in the deal. That's right. Amen. Say, I'm in the deal. Praise God. We need to rejoice about this, because belief is most important to a human being. Amen. How shall they hear without a preacher? How can they believe? Well, they can't. Somebody's got to share the good news with them and remind them that they need to believe in Jesus. In other words, in St. John 12, 32, what we need to believe is, and hold to it no matter what, is that Jesus himself was our sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. He said this in verse 32, the Lord said, If I be lifted up from the earth, that's talking about being crucified, I will draw all men to me. Now, not all men respond, but thank God we did. This is said signifying what death he should die. He already knew yeah. his mission, his work, his purpose. He was born of the Virgin Mary to die. Yeah. And the thing of it is, we didn't offer him as a sacrifice for sins. God offered his son as a sacrifice for our sins so that he wouldn't have to put us in hell. Yeah. You must believe that. Glory to God. And if you've believed that, you have passed from death unto life eternal. Yeah, in a moment of time. Amen. We had nothing to do with it. We just took God upon the deal. Praise God. Yes. Furthermore, you don't have to do anything after you believe. 
Now you will, but not for salvation. Praise God. We're saved by faith plus nothing else. All our righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. We do fade as the leaf, and when our iniquities have taken us away. That's what the prophet said. John said, where they crucified our Lord, speaking of Jerusalem. Jesus was crucified. He was our Lord. That's right. yeah. And our God. And yet, He was the Son of Man, sinless. And so, He was the only one that could actually appease the wrath of the Godhead. Amen. Because we were cursed with a curse. We inherited that problem from Adam. But thank God, the Lord loved us. Even in Genesis 3.15, the Lord uh, prophesied to Satan. You might bruise his heel, but he's going to bruise your head. Now, if I could speculate, the person that spoke for the Godhead was Jesus. Now, he wasn't known as Jesus. He was the Word, the second person of the Trinity. But he was the one that come down and walked with Adam in the cool of the day. Not the Father or the Spirit. Anyway, moving right along here. I'm on belief. You must believe these things. Can you get a hold of it that that God himself would come and prophesy that he would become a man and die for the sins of the human race? And whoever believes in him will not perish but have life eternal. That was given before we were ever born. Some 6,000 years ago. And it's still true today. How many have believed on Jesus as Savior and Lord? Now after His finished work, He sent the Holy Ghost. After He was crucified, buried, resurrected, went back to heaven, sat on the right hand of the Father God as our great faithful high priest. He sent the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost. Amen. You must believe this. I said you must believe this. He didn't send Himself. He sent the third person in the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit comes to stay. He'll never leave. How can you say that? Well, He's omnipresent, people. Praise God. The miracle is He gives us part of Himself. To live inside of us. How is that possible? The cross is the only means that makes makes it possible. So it's the blood that's accepted that was shed for our sins. And then the Holy Spirit can legally and can come in and live in us. Permanent. Permanent. He's not coming to, to leave. Well, now... You're getting over into one saved, always saved. Well, it ought to be. Yeah, Amen. If you're born again, then why would you want to be lost? Right. Yeah. It's illogical. I know there are those that backslide and lose that with God, but that's not us. Amen. Amen. And by the grace of God, it's not going to be us. Right. Well, thank God. Amen. Because life eternal is forever. Amen. Glory to God. Well, I don't understand. Quit overthinking. Just accept the fact that God has given us eternal life the very moment that we believe. Amen. Praise God. I received eternal life the moment I believed before I ever went and said the sinner's prayer. Because if a sinner's prayer could save me, that'd be a work. Hello, somebody. God looks on the heart. Man looks on the outward. Now we go through the motions because Satan's going to come and say, oh, you didn't get it saved. Wait a minute, devil. I prayed the sinner's prayer. Right. Just like he tells some of you Christians. You didn't get to feel the Spirit. Wait a minute, devil. I spoke with tongues. Yes. So you see, the devil's going to challenge us, but he loses every time. Right. Why? Because we believe and we're in the belief system that God honors. Amen. Glory to God. Now let's look at John 16, verse 8. Okay. What do you mean we need to believe this? Well, I'm talking about believing. We've got to believe something. Amen. Well, all we've got to believe is Jesus died on the cross. No, it's not. It isn't. He was resurrected. 
A lot of people died on the cross. He sent the Holy Spirit to bear witness to the truth. What is truth? John 17, 17, sanctify them to the truth. Thy word is truth. We have the word. We must believe the word of God. I should say we get to believe it. Amen. So if somebody asks you what you believe, you're going to say, well, I believe the scripture. And hope they ask you, well, what's the scripture say? There's the door. You get to, you get to tell them what the scripture says. In a nutshell, you must believe. What do we believe? There's the door to witness. Come on, somebody. How easy can it be? Verse 8. When he was come, he will reprove the world of sin. When the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, this is what he's going to do. Reprove the world of sin. The world don't like it. I can't help that. Of righteousness and judgment. And then verse 9. Of sin because they believe not on me. Here again. They don't believe on Jesus. And the Holy Spirit convicts them. Because Jesus is the truth and the life, and no man comes to God but by Him. There's only one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. He alone is Savior and Lord and soon come and judge for those that do not believe. But thank God, those that do believe are in the household of faith, and we will not be judged by King Jesus because we've accepted His provision. That's what it means to carry your cross. I've accepted what God's offered. Amen. And it's getting bigger and bigger. Glory to God. Now St. John 9, 35. Amen. Do I have any believers in here? See, that's a good question. That's a good question. Well, what do you believe? See? So we've got to... Cultivate the belief system from time to time. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. This was a miracle that took place. They threw him out of, out of church. When he had found him, he said to him, Do you, what? Believe on the Son of God. What a question. And here Jesus was asking it. And he said, Who is he? Uh, Lord, that I might believe. He didn't know. That I might believe. Say believe. believe. I'm going to get this honed in here now. It's like, how many car- got any carpenters in here? I know there's some that, that build with wood. and uh, You know what a countersink nail head is? Huh? You just don't hammer it up flush. You countersink that baby in. And that's what we're trying to do to your honorary hides today. Is countersink this doctrine of belief. When we get it countersunk, then we're going to put it over with Holy Ghost. <laughs> Some of you got the nail sticking out too far. We're going to have to hammer that thing in now. Jesus said to him, Thou hast both seen him, and he it is that talks with you. He said, Lord, I believe. There it is. Then you worship. That's a corresponding action to belief system. Amen. Amen. Always something follows belief. And something follows unbelief. I don't want that. Amen. Amen. So the emphasis then, again, is always on belief. Amen. The thief on the cross, he didn't know anything. He said, Lord... Remember me when you go into your kingdom. Now, he, he heard that somewhere. So he must have believed that Jesus was the king. Amen. Because you can't have a kingdom if you're not a king. That's right. So he said, Lord, remember me. That's it. No seven steps to healing. Huh? No joining the church, no water baptism, no nothing. Didn't know how to pray. Didn't know anybody. Dying pain. Guilty. And Jesus said, because that guy believed. Amen. Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. Glory to God. 
Would I love to have been that guy, not that he's been crucified, but he was the first one to follow Jesus down. Amen. Praise God. But the other thief, he didn't make it. He refused to believe. Well, you know where he went. Isaiah said something in 53 verse 1, part A. Who has believed our report? And then Isaiah 53, read it. That was the report we were to believe in. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, like a, he opened not his mouth, and so forth and so on. And uh, he, he, You need to read Isaiah 53 sometime. Because that's the report. And he wants to know, the prophet wants to know, who has believed it. So if you don't know what you believe, read Isaiah 53, and God will explain to you what you need to believe, starting out in your Christian life. Amen. Now, let's go to Acts chapter 8. We're going to quit here in a minute. Praise the Lord. Very important what we believe. Amen. Acts chapter 8 and verse 26. I'm going to read some scriptures now. And that's the best way. The scripture interprets itself. This is when Philip was preaching a great revival and Holy Spirit told him to leave and go out into the desert. And not many today would do that. They want to go to the big mega churches. Uh, if the Holy Spirit tells you to go out to the desert to one man, you best go. Amen. Amen. Because God's got the blessing for both of you. It won't be found in a mega mass. Amen. Yeah. The angel of the Lord spake to Philip and said, Arise and go toward the south the way. Uh, goes down Jerusalem to Gaza, which is desert. And he rose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch, a great authority under Cadus, queen of Ethiopians, which had the charge of all her treasure. She's rich. And had come to Jerusalem to worship. All right, and was returning and sitting in the chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. And the Spirit said to Philip, Oh, I love that part. Go near and join yourself to the chariot. So Philip ran thither. He didn't just lollygag along. He ran thither and to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you're reading? Basically. In other words, do you understand what you need to believe? He said, how can I accept some man should guide me? Now, he went to Jerusalem to worship, but nobody could guide him. Terrible thing. It's a terrible thing to go to church when your preacher can't tell you what to believe. And he said, how can I accept a man should guide me? And he desired Philip, he would come up and sit down with him. So come up in the chair and sit down and rest a while. The place of Scripture which he read was like this. Now, he read Isaiah 53. The same one that we just mentioned a while ago. The place of Scripture which is read was, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb done before his shear, he opened out his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? His life is taken from the earth. The eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speakest the prophet this, himself or some other man? Then Philip, thank God Philip knew what he believed. Yeah. He believed the scripture. Amen. And also what he observed. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. He didn't preach unto him denomination. Huh? Didn't preach unto him rules and regulations. He preached unto him Jesus. That means he preached, you must believe that Jesus died on the cross, so forth and so on, the gospel. He preached the gospel. Yes, amen. Jesus is the gospel, and they went their way. And there was a certain water, and eunuch said, Here, what, here's water, what hinders me to get baptized? So apparently, baptism was mentioned in the sermon, in the witnessing. Yeah. Yes. All right. Then Philip said, Here it comes, if you believe. Glory to God. That's the condition. The only condition. If you believe. Amen. So he asked the question, and the guy says, now let me finish. Philip said, if you believe with all your heart. Amen. Well, I know somebody said, somebody said that somebody died. No, 
You must believe with all your heart. And God knows if people do or if they don't. Only God knows. But this individual, man, he was looking. If you believe with all your heart, you may. In other words, you can get baptized now. That's the condition to follow the Lord in water baptism, communion, or anything else that we do or is done for us. Believe. Amen. Amen. So he said, I believe. Here it comes. Everybody say, here it comes. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. There it is. But Philip was looking for a verbal response. The man already said he believed. So it's belief first and confess second and don't you ever forget it. However, you can be saved without saying a word. But if you're saved, you're going to talk it up. Come on, somebody. You're going to talk it up. Talk it up. Amen. So in verse 30, he commanded the church to stand still. He went down. They went down both into the water, and Philip sprinkled the eunuch, baptized him. Is that what that says? He baptized him all the way down. And we got these denominations. Well, you got to baptize face down. Some of them turn people upside down and dunk them like a lollipop. <laughs> then, then you got to be baptized going backward three times, not just once. No, one death is enough. And so, here it comes, 39, and when they were coming up out of the water, it's hard to sprinkle when you're coming up out of the water. You know what I'm saying? The Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. Oh, boy. You talk about flying for 30 miles. Didn't need an airplane. Praise God. He was so caught up in the Spirit and transported 33 miles to the city of Ozotus, and they found him there preaching the gospel in the city. Wow. And the eunuch went on his way rejoicing. Took revival back to Africa. Praise God. All because of one man and one faith of belief. And one evangelist that was willing to share the truth. Praise God. There's always somebody looking for the truth. Amen. Now in 1 Timothy 3.16. Hallelujah. Here's a little hint of what we need to believe. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was a manifest in the flesh. That's talking about Jesus, God becoming flesh, a human being. Justified in the Spirit, seen of angels, preached to the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up to glory. There it is, a little condensed statement there in one verse. He was believed on. Amen. Praise God. Then in St. John 1 and verse 12, one of my favorite scriptures. So when we believe on the Son, we receive something from the Son. Amen. You won't find it anywhere else but from Him. As many as received Him. He gave the power to become the sons of God. Look at this now. Even to them that believe on His name. His name is greater. Prince of peace, mighty God, everlasting Father, on and on we can go. Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley. King of kings, Lord of lords, fairest 10,000. On and on we can go. Messiah. I like that word, Shiloh. Yeshua. On and on. He's the condensed version of the Godhead in bodily form. Praise God. So we must believe. Amen. In the Son of God. The last verse today is Acts 16. Hallelujah. All right. And let's look at verse 30 and 31. 
This is when the apostles were thrown in prison and uh, the jailer was going to kill himself because he thought they'd escape. And if you let your prisoner escape in those days, you're dead. But God had a plan. And this jailer asked in verse 30, he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Now, could you answer somebody that question? Here's the question. Because he, he, re he recognized that, that God was with the apostles, even in jail. So he asked the question, what do I need to do to be saved? How many want to know? One thing. This one thing is all you got to do. One. One simple little thing is all you got to do. Amen. Then you're accepted in the beloved. Praise God. What a covenant, man. <laughs> we don't deserve it. I know it. But God loves us. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you shall be saved and your house. Amen. Let's shout somebody. Amen. Praise God. If you have believed on the all-sufficient, anointed Savior, God promises, I don't care what it looks like, what you think, quit thinking, start believing. I don't care how messed up your kids are and your grandkids. I don't care. It doesn't matter. We walk by faith and not sight. Right. God has a final say. Right. Right. Well, He won't violate their will. Now, wait a minute. When God gets through, they'll change their will. Yeah. That's right. He won't violate their choice. Oh, when God gets through, they'll be willing to choose. Yeah. You don't believe me, ask Jonah. No, that's right. Amen. Shout amen, somebody. Amen. God's got us covered. If you've believed, accept this and claim it right now. Because you have believed and are believing in a good God, His mercy endures to a thousand generations. Amen. We're in grace. Thank God. The curse is broken. There is no curse past Calvary. Glory to God. The only people who have generational curse are those that hate God. That's it. We don't hate God. We love God. He's number one. Amen. Glory to God. I have believed, and therefore we speak. Amen. And God promises, you'll be saved, have life eternal, and all the benefits of glory for all time and eternity, 10,000 years, and we've just beginning. Right. And your house. Those rebellious children, they think they're going to do their own, sow the wild oats. Oh, it's got a way of coming back. <laughs> and God's able to save the uttermost. But if we stop believing and go back in the world, there's consequences. I'm going to ask the question now. Do you need to believe? If we believe, we need to Put action to it sometimes. I'm not calling for some big altar call today, but I'll tell you what, back in the days of old, you didn't have to give an altar call. When it come time, the preacher was bringing the message, they'd run down here and squall and ball and give their life to Christ. What's changed? Sin hardens the heart. There's only one remedy, and that's the cross of Calvary, and that is it. But thank God. He knows who's going to run. It's like the prodigal son. I got to get out of the hog pen, get back to God, my father, so to speak. Here he comes. The father had the fatted calf and everything. Ready to go. You got to come to the end of yourself and realize I need God. My family needs God. You know, I'm going to say this to the parents God's counting on you to keep the faith because your children are in, in, in the balance. God doesn't violate the chain of command. Amen. We daddies need to stand strong. All you fathers stand up right now. I'm going to follow. All you dads stand up right now. If you beget one children, one child, 
five or 20, it doesn't matter. You're special. You're special. God is the one that allowed conception. And that child, those girls, I don't care how stubborn they are, those boys, I don't care how reckless they are, God knew them before they were conceived in, in, in your wife's womb. He knew. And He has a plan for your children. But God's counting on you to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the armor of God and begin to confess my family's going to be saved because I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and I'm not bending glory to God. Amen. Now you men shout about it. Come on. Amen. Well, praise God. It's not over yet. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now everybody stand in that place. Amen. We're through. We're through. Praise God. How many is going to stand in the evil day? Yes. Amen. Get the armor all on. Praise God. Build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Make sure you're in the will of God. Do what's right. That's all. Forgive people. Because we've been forgiven. <laughs> Let it go. Doesn't matter what Sister Sal said. Who cares? hundred years, it won't matter. Right. Glory to God. Oh, there's some schisms in the family situation. They we're going to speak to you now under authority of God's Word. Satan, you've got to take your hands off of our children. Amen. Off of those that are trying to be lured away into the world. Satan, you've got to turn them loose. Demons have got to turn them loose because we're standing in faith and we, we are the boss. We're telling you, you spirits in the, in the realm that's above the earth, to let our family go. We command you to let them go because the name of Jesus is greater than your power. You, you have no power over them because they're under our blood covenant. Glory to God. We claim our souls for the kingdom of God and they will come in before it's too late in the name of Jesus. Now you go and leave them alone. There comes a time we've got to speak. I know it seems a little foolish, but hey, they're in the atmosphere pestering our family and we've got to get enough of it. Amen. God said that whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Whatever we allow on earth will be allowed in heaven. And whatever we forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. Right. It's time to get strong, everybody. Amen. It's time to get strong. Amen. God's with us. Yes. Take your position in the kingdom of God and be glad you're in the family of God. And they're all going to come in. Amen. When they do. I think we need to rejoice right now before they come in. You know that? Before they repent. We need to thank God in advance. You think that's faith? I think it is because God said, your household will be saved. He said, can God lie? No. Then it's true. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that mean, rebellious girl of yours, treat her like she's just the queen of Sheba. Oh, give her a hug, act like there's nothing wrong. Is there anything wrong? Who says something's wrong? God says they're going to be saved. Go up to that meanest person, the biggest sinner you can find. How you doing, brother so-and-so? Sister so-and-so, how you doing? Well, if you claim yourself for the kingdom of God, they're coming in. Amen. Folks, use your authority. Will you do that much for us? Use your authority. Amen. Amen. Praise God. How many is glad to be saved today? Amen. Do I have any believers in here? Yeah. Well, thank God for you because God's counting on us to do the work in these last days and we're going to do it in the name that's above every name. Hallelujah. Amen.